Welcome back to Marion's World. I've got another page in my flower book. It's actually a double page spread because I'm right at the middle of my book. Um, I hope you like it. Being able to use something that I did earlier on this year and it's come out lovely. I hope you really enjoy it. The next page in my flower book uh, after the daisy is actually the middle page. So I wanted to do something in particular, I wasn't quite sure what, but actually I decided that I would do Meadow Crane's Bill, which is one of my favourite wildflowers and I do have it growing in my garden too. That's Geranium Pretensi. And I remembered that earlier in the summer I'd actually done quite a bit of hapazomi or flower pounding with crane spills, the ones out of my courtyard. And so I do have some lovely prints of crane spills. I've cut out the best and I'm going to make an arrangement. So these will be life size crane spill flowers. What I've already done is cut out the flowers and then I've stitched around and stitched the veins in so I haven't done all of them yet there's three that are finished so each flower I've decided to stitch around it with a different stitch so this one got an overcast stitch around it that's already got the bonding on the back so I can put it onto my page um, this one got stem stitch around the petals and this one has running stitch around it this one has running stitch too and so I've just done as many as I feel I think I've got another one somewhere oh and this one is half done that's got whipped chain a uh, whipped running stitch and I've bonded these already but I've still got some more stitching to do so on these ones what I've been able to do is I can see where the veins on the petals were and so I've stitched over them with this very fine apricot in my needle and I am just stitching the actual veins that I can actually see in my printing and so I'm just going to stitch up them Actually, I should take the bonding off first. So I wanted to do some of the stitching before the bonding went on. So I did all of the outside embroidery, all the outside petal embroidery beforehand. And these, these ones were quite compact. On one like that, where the petals were really spread out, I've decided that I've bonded it first and then I'm going to cut it out and then arrange them so that they're closer together and more like the real flower. So I'll do this the same in embroidery once I've done it. So my next job is to do like that one, which is cut out entirely. And the nice thing about the fabric being bonded is that it's very firm and easy to stitch, nothing seems to fray on it and therefore you can cut quite tightly to your stitching and the paper is keeping it all stable and so I'll cut these out now and then embellish with any more embroidery before I go to make my arrangement on the page I suppose if I didn't have the the Hapazomi prints, I could have painted these with ink tents, but um, it's nice that I actually have the, the prints to use. There's two ready. This is another one ready to cut out. So now that I've got the this one cut out you can see how wide open it is in comparison to those ones so I feel that what I can do is just take this bonding off here so that I can stitch it again 
and then I don't I didn't particularly want to take all the petals separately I'm just going to fold them inwards like that and then as I stitch the stamens on it'll bring the whole flower together so I'm just going to actually it's not the stamens I'm doing at the moment it's the veins of the petals and I can just see them and when you look on a real flower they're sort of a very pale orange and I feel as if I've got the perfect colour and I'm going to stitch all these the bee lines that's what they are um, for showing the bees where to go for the nectar And as I get to the middle, I'll just make sure that still stays creased up. So that I've shortened the petal into the middle, which is what I wanted to do. And I'm going to go around and do all of them like that. The stamens are done in this, then a slightly deeper orange and I've just done straight stitches. And then two little lines of a dark brown on the top. And for the leaves, I don't have any geranium leaf, but I do have this, which I think was Sweet Sicily. And I've got another odd couple of leaves. And I've just running stitched around that one. And I've done double running stitch on there. And double running stitch on there. So they'll be almost ready to cut out. Make sure I keep it straight. I'm going to manipulate this petal inwards. Come up through the fold. And then ready to do the lines on this one too. I think that's going to work by bringing those petals in. I've just got those two to go now. Carry on putting the veins in. I'm just about finished. I just have these last few stitches to put on the stamens. I'm just doing two little straight stitches with a dark brown to make the stamens. These have all been bonded, so they're all they're all ready to apply. I've cut the ferny leaves out, and I've just done some straight stitches on them, so those two are ready. But this is this is the very last um, cranes bill to get finished, and then I'll be ready to arrange. The only thing I'm struggling with at the moment is the words I'm going to put on the page. So I wanted something a bit more than I usually put because I've got this quite this big page to fill in. And this was one of the pages that I was short when I put it together. And I added this little frayed bit of green, which I really do like actually. But it feels like I want to put my words here and my image there, always remembering that I'll have the stitched spine in the middle. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any Meadow Cranesbill poetry, so hopefully when I've finished doing all the stitching, I'll have a little bit of a research because I need to know what I'll be writing before I actually do my arrangement in case I need to put the flowers in a certain way or leave more or less space. Uh, I've got one more to do and that means all of my flowers are now prepared. Just one more stitch. Except it's only got four petals but you never know I might actually not need the fifth one. If I do I'll cut it out of the next piece. 
So that one's now ready. Well, I've come up with an arrangement that I'm happy with. I'm just going to let the leaves go on as a first, a first um, layer. I'll just press them down. And I looked all over for some words to write other than just its Latin name. And I couldn't find anything. Nobody seems to have written anything about the beautiful meadow cranes bill. So I'm just going to write my own. And then arrange the top and repress it again. I just want them to be really prettily put on here. Here. I wasn't going to have anything over the spine, but I don't think it matters. And this one. Sort of. I think that looks. I think that looks nice. And just make sure that I'm pressing it exactly how I want to do it. There it goes. That's really nice. I need a bit more, a bit more pressing. Well, the flowers are all ironed down now and I think they look really pretty. I'm really happy that I've been able to use the flowers that I did on Midsummer's Day with the flower pounding. And so I've come up with this little bit of writing. It says childhood memories of Meadow Cranesville. Standing in a field of blue, the flowers almost as tall as myself. I can remember standing, maybe I was about 10, uh, standing going to my great grandmother's and the meadow cranes bills were coming up almost to my shoulders and I was standing with my hands outstretched, just touching and brushing the flowers because there were so many and it's a really good memory so that's what I'm going to put on there. I'm hoping I'm just going to write it straight on. As you can see, I planned it so I could get all of the words on. So I'll just go for it, I think. Might be quiet now while I concentrate. It's funny how some things can really take you back. And cranes, birds and flower definitely do that for me they are they have to be my most favorite flower okay it's not exactly straight but i'm actually not that concerned about that it is more important to me that that's what i've written and it's a handmade book. I'm quite pleased with it. Well, I'm back on, working on this page again. It's the next morning. I have come down and realised that I put my S right over where the spine will get stitched. And it's really annoyed me because... Usually, you know, I just go for it and write my words and there's never a bother. I don't even mind that it's a bit, you know, here and there. It's all part of a handmade book. But that S over there, I need to do something about it. So I thought it would be good to show you that things do go wrong, but you just have to move forward. And so I've been coming up with what I was going to do to remedy the whole thing permanent pen I can't get it off my first thought was to cut out a piece of um, this has already been bonded it's a leftover from something else I thought I'd cover the whole thing up with this pale blue take the flowers off do it again wasn't really happy with that in the end what I've come up with is I found another piece of bonded uh, fabric that wasn't bonded but it's just what I use to mop up the colours 
and so it actually had colours on that are really similar to this so I've cut a piece of that out and I've cut it so that I've got a leafy edge to the bottom and it doesn't go over the spine at the moment so still some of the words are actually still poking out I'll take it out of here actually <clears throat> So some of the words are still poking out a bit. If I put it there where you can see it. I've got still some there. So the whole purpose, if you're trying to mend something, is make it look like it's purposeful. And so I've cut out lots of little leaves. And I am going to iron bond the little leaves. Not only over the black that I can see but over the other places too. So it all looks purposeful. So the little leaves will be coming over and then it just looks like it's a leafy memory, which is what the whole thing is anyway. So, wish me luck because this is what I'm about to do. So I thought it might be easier to actually write the writing before. Is it easy to write the writing before? No, I think I'll bond it first. Give it a good press. These things happen. It's not the end of the world, but always, always something you can do. So actually, I'm really pleased with the colours on there. I did have some other flowers I could have cut out. I've got some other leaves that I could have cut out, but nothing, nothing seemed to be quite what I was after. I might need some more tiny leaves, but I don't mind, I don't know. So I'm now going to attempt again to do my writing. This time I'll use a bit of post-it note to help keep me straight. I think I'll have to go over that again. Still like the way I did the writing on that. Okay. I like the fact that the word blue is going to be on the blue background. I've gone over it with my new pen. I'm really happy with that. And now I'm just going to arrange all these tiny little bits of leaves so that the whole thing looks like it's meant to be. So obviously I need to cover the little bits of a black pen that is still showing. That should be easy enough. But then I've got to put it everywhere else too. If something looks purposeful then nobody's going to look for where the mistake was. Well, that's, my, that's my theory anyway. Why don't I put some dropping off as well? Like falling leaves. Makes it look even more purposeful then. Okay, I'll go for it with the iron and hopefully that's it. I've added a few more leaves now, so there's a few up here and then going down there. And now it looks to me like the memory is sort of bringing in the flowers. And so I think it's ended up better than it was. And it can go into my book. Well, that was a bit of a to-do, having to cover up that mistake. But it just shows that there's always something you can do, always something you can fix. And sometimes, like this one, it turned out better than the original. Well, I think so anyway. 
Um, that's all for today, other than to say thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing, for pressing the like button, um, for just sending me comments that I can uh, see how much you're enjoying it or what you're telling me what you're doing. I really do like that. And so thank you very much. Please subscribe to my channel and I will uh, catch you next time with probably a bird. Oh. Yeah, I think it will be a bed. I think it will be a bed. I am getting ahead on some videos because I'm going to be going away at the end of next week for, uh, for a few days. And so I'll be leaving you with maybe one or two different things uh, that I've been getting on with in the meantime. Uh, but more of that probably next time. Uh, bye from Marine's World. Thank you for watching and see you next week.